गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुरेवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः गुरु इज ब्रह्मा गुरु इज विष्णु गुरु इज शिवा गुरु इज एवरीथिंग एंड गॉड इज गुरु एंड दैट सेम गॉड इज इन यू and the goal of the guru is to help you to know that that god is in you that the, help, the goal of the guru is not to show himself as greater than you his his role is to help you to see that you are that in his last days my guruji gave much counsel to his disciples on many different topics there was one talk that i related which covers several of those topics and i'm going to read some of them today but uh, i'll only give a little bit or let's say perhaps a little bit more than half of this talk the following words were among the last advice he gave to the monks no one can give you the desire for god you must cultivate that desire in yourselves god himself couldn't give it to you when he created human beings he didn't make them puppets you must desire him yourselves how many people there are who think that uh, god has to give them that desire god has to give them the, their his blessings mind you his blessings are equally there just as the sun pours equally on the side of a building but some rooms are dark and some rooms are airy depending on whether their window curtains are drawn apart or drawn closed so god is not it's not as if god has favorites he doesn't like me for my blue eyes and others like less for the green eyes no he loves all equally we have to love him why it's not that he wants our love in the sense of being flattered by it he wants it yes because love wants itself but he wants us to call to him he can't give us that desire what is it that gives you that desire well yes suffering no doubt suffering is a necessary part in this world it's finally suffering that makes you long for god it's finally suffering that makes you long for perfection in him the recognize the recognition of your inadequacy without him of the the fact that you can never be whole in yourself until you're one with him all of this is a part of it but you must discriminate he's not going to do that for you he makes this a very well concealed plot you've got to see through it and see that behind all of this nothing will ever give you what you want except your own self and that's what god is and so cultivate that desire and the more you do exercise devotion and pray for devotion the more he will give it to you because finally it's all he anyway but that power that grace of devotion which yes does come from him only comes when we open ourselves to it when we put out the magnetism to draw it there has to be that first longing on your part reaching out and drawing down it is never as if you give that sweetness to him how could you give him sweetness he is the sweetness you're giving but you have to reach out and with that magnetism you see it's all magnetism that vortex of magnetism that you generate with that consciousness of love draws more to itself that's the mechanics of it but some people don't like to think in terms of mechanics they're more bhaktas that's fine and right love god love krishna love kali love any form of god that you like but with that love also pray god give me the power of devotion in praying for that he will come through that opening and he will give it to you and so my guruji said don't don't uh, expect that he's going to do that for you you must first of all discriminate think how empty life is without him think how barren it is 
without him. Don't People don't understand the extent to which the soul inside their inner consciousness suffers when they don't turn toward that higher truth. And yes, you can make a lot of noise. You know how it is at a party. Everybody's making noise, and you don't notice that one person may be weeping in a corner. I remember there was a movie starlet in Hollywood. She was a part of the Hollywood scene. She'd been in movies. She was a beautiful woman. She was at a party, and she was sitting on the, on the outskirts just weeping. And somebody came to her, and he was sort of drunk and with a lot of uh, sort of bluster. He said, here's what you need. And she gave her autobiography of a yogi by my Gurudev, Paramahansa Yogananda. Well, I don't know how serious he was, but she became very serious reading it. She ended up being a, ma a nun and a disciple of our guru. Well, this is something that we all come to understand. That party doesn't give it to you. The weeping draws it to you. The fulfillment of finding the bliss, finding the way and following that way, that is what the soul really wants. And so, Guruji went on to say, be wary of developing too keen an intelligence. Many people use their powers of reasoning cleverly to justify their delusions. Master used to say, people are so skillful in their ignorance. Concentrate more instead on developing the heart quality. Devote as much time as you can daily to meditation, to actually experiencing God. Your heart quality is what you know, actually, it's been discovered now in medical science there are more nerves in the heart than there are in the brain. The heart is actually a, a conscious instrument. Not Still, it's really not the physical heart, and I don't know to what extent the separation is, but it's actually the chakra behind the heart, the anahat chakra. But with your intuitive feeling understanding, you can understand a great more a great deal more than you ever can by just reasoning things through. You see people who think that they can just get the final answer by a definition, and they sort of they are looking on life like a chess game, where you move the knight and you move the pawns and you move the bishop and so on. You know, I had a funny experience many years ago. I was still a young man of twenty or so, and. Uh, I used to play chess sometimes, and I just happened to find myself in a tournament. And there was this one man there who was supposed to be an expert um, player, and his particular skill was with pawns. So I thought, well, I, I can't claim that kind of expertise, but I'll just sort of have fun. So I just moved my pawns in every which way. The poor guy was completely confused because he thought I must have some deep strategy. And he couldn't figure out what I was doing. Of course, I wasn't doing anything at all. I ended up beating him. Well, he, he really, you, uh, life is like that. There's so much confusion that people are always trying to pick the pieces together, put them together, try to make sense out of it all. And they succeed to some extent. But where do they get with it? Look at the most intellectual person in the world. He's not happy. Life basically is really quite simple. You don't have to figure it all out. What you have to do is love. I went through a period back again when I was fortunately many years ago when I was young. I had suddenly great doubts. It's because, as my Guruji explained, that was my great weakness in past lives, was doubting. I'd done this myself. I'm not talking theory. I'm talking experience. But I found that the answer to it wasn't finding answers to my questions. It was recognizing the love of my guru and realizing that's what I really wanted. And by love, I found my doubts vanished. And I've never had doubts again. I understand now. Like that song, Ah, oh, Sweet Mystery of Life, 
Oh, it's love. And love alone the soul is seeking. This love is the answer to all your questions. You know, sometimes I would come to my guru with a long list of questions. And I'd want to ask them. Suddenly, in his presence, I didn't have those questions. Love answered them. Love is the answer. Questions are like the bee outside the flower, beating its wings and making a lot of noise. Once you get into the flower and begin sucking the honey of love, you're quiet. That is the answer. God wants us to love him. God wants us to enter into the inner silence. And so, again, what my Guruji said here is, don't try to approach God by seeking definitions. Don't look intellectually. Another thing he said was, don't sleep too much. Sleep is the unconscious way of contacting God. It is counterfeit ecstasy. Don't joke too much. I myself, he went on to say, as you know, like a good laugh. But if I make up my mind to be serious, no one can make me even smile. Be happy and cheerful, but above all, inwardly. Be outwardly grave, but inwardly cheerful. Don't waste the perception of God's presence acquired in meditation by useless chatting. Idle words are like bullets. They riddle the milk pail of peace. In devoting unnecessary time to conversation and exuberant laughter, you'll find that you have nothing left inside. Fill the pail of your consciousness with the milk of meditative peace. Then keep it filled. Joking is false happiness. Too much laughter riddles the mind and lets the peace in the bucket flow out, wasting it. Wine, sex, and money. These are the three great delusions. Don't be trapped by them. Some of you are weak, I know, but don't be discouraged. Meditate regularly, and you will find a joy inside that is real. You will then have something you can compare to sense pleasure. That comparison will automatically make you want to forsake your sorrow-producing bad habits. The best way to overcome temptation is to have something more fulfilling to compare it with. Sex seems pleasant to you now, but when you discover the real joy of inner communion and inner union, you will see how much more wonderful that is. This union can be achieved physically also. Now here's a strange one, but it's a part of the yoga teachings. It can be achieved physically also by what is known in yoga as kechari mudra. Touching the tip of the tongue to nerves in the nasal passage or to the uvula at the back of the mouth. Well, I'm not going to go into that one in detail. That's a pretty subtle aspect of the yoga teachings, but it doesn't hurt to mention it because you can achieve that sense of union inwardly and it takes all the energy and gives you a sense of real inner self-generating joy with no loss of energy. Don't waste time on distractions, reading too much and so on. Reading can be good if it is instructive or inspiring, but if you let it interfere with meditation, it becomes an evil. Read only a little bit to find inspiration, but spend most of your time in meditative silence. Consider this. Every day, 100 books, more or less, are published. You couldn't read them all if you wanted to. No one, no matter how brilliant, could absorb more than a tiny fraction of the knowledge available. Scientists often pride themselves on their knowledge, but can they explain how even a simple leaf was created? Why stuff your head with other people's discoveries anyway? That is all one accomplishes by reading all the time. I always say if you read one hour, then write two hours, think three hours, and meditate all the time. 
So don't think that you even, even to gain outward knowledge, you don't need to read to get it. You don't need to think to get it. You know you have that knowledge at your fingertips. Well, not exactly your fingertips, right here. The more you go into the inner silence, the more you find yourself understanding. Without reading, you know. Even facts. There's an amazing truth that the more in tune you are with the superconscious, the more you know. You understand even the most, what you should do with your life, how you should direct it, whom you should meet, whom you should not meet. All of this is inside. Keep the door of your heart open, open to God's love. You will see that that love can flood you if you live like that. Joy to you.